All right, so let's do um, a very quick session at the end of the chapter here, and it's going to be about um, conditional entropy. So a really nice um, intuitive and simple idea. Uh, so let's go through it. So it says, we, again, we have it. So it is, we're talking about pairs of variables here. So suppose we have a joint distribution P of X, Y, from which we draw pairs of values of X and Y. So if we have a value of x that's already known, then the additional information we need to, to specify the corresponding value of y is minus ln p of y over x. So this is essentially saying, um, you know, every time I give you, a, if, if I give you an x, now there's a new probability distribution that's formed, which is the conditional distribution of y given x. And as usual, you know, our, our amount of surprise is 1 over p of y given x now, because now we're, we're given some values. So that's what this term is. Um, and then the average additional, the average additional information needed to specify y can be written as this conditional distribution, this conditional entropy, which is the expectation over the joint distribution of x and y of, of this uh, surprise, of this, uh, of ln of p of y given x. Now, one thing that's really important, it um, took me a while to remember it, is that this is p is so what it this does not equal p of y given x so this notation i find a little bit confusing all the time because you would think you might think you know you might think that well since you know h of x is you know minus p of x ln p of x dx this implies just notationally that h of y given x well, is equal to, uh, you know, minus p of, p of y given x, ln p of y given x dy. But that is actually not the case. So this is, um, so that is just the, I don't know what the notation for that is. Um, that's just the, that's the entropy of the distribution over y. And this, but this conditional entropy is the average of that over values of x. So notice that this, would still be a function of x, right? Because the, prob the probability distribution itself is. So you would have a kind of an entropy that's a function of x. But these entropy functions are supposed to be essentially, um, they're supposed to kind of integrate out over both of the values, of both of the variables. So, so let's erase all of that. So it's just important to really remember, and I'm gonna highlight it, that it's actually p of y given, p of y and x, it's the joint distribution there. Um, and let's see what he means by it being the average additional information. So the whole point of this is that if we actually expand this out, let's just do that together. So this is h of y given x is equal to. So I'm going to write that as p of x times p of y given x log p of y given x dy dx. And now we can just take the p of x out. So then this is just the same as p of x times you know minus p of y given x log p of y given x dy and then this whole thing is dx. So now this is so this is the average, you know, the average over x of you know this quantity, which is, you know, I don't know, we can we can call that h of y x or something like this. So that's kind of the, this quantity in the brace is um, the entropy of the distribution on y given a particular value of x. And then we then average over the different values of x to get our overall conditional entropy. So really please do remember that it's, you are integrating over the joint and that integration over the joint is equivalent to taking the average of um, the entropy of the conditional distribution on y. Okay, um, and then finally, so at the very end, that is easily seen using the product rule, and we'll just do that in a sec. The conditional entropy satisfies the relation. The joint entropy is the conditional entropy plus the marginal entropy. So this is the differential entropy of the joint distribution. So what that means, and I think what's really nice about a lot of these entropy formulas is they actually have, they make a lot of sense, you know, when you say them in, in words. It says the information needed to describe x and y, so that's h of x given y, is the sum of the information needed to describe x alone, so that's h of x, so you know, specifying that prior distribution, plus the information needed to require, to, needed to uh, specify y, 
given x. So kind of a very intuitive result. So the joint entropy um, is the sum of h of x. So the enter the you know the information you need to specify the values of x themselves, and then uh, the entropy you need to specify y given x um, averaged over um, the values of x you're going to observe. So quite intuitive. Let's just uh, wrap up by uh, by um, showing that this is indeed the case. So I'm just going to erase all of that. Okay, so let's just do that. This should be an easy one. So h of x, y. So we, we know that it's p of x, y times log of p of x, y. And now we're going to use um, the, the product rule. So d of dx, dy. And so it's going to equal double the integral p of x, y log of p of y given x, p of x dx dy. And then we just split that up, right? So we could just split that up into minus the double integral of p, p of x y log p of y given x dx dy um, minus um, p of x y double integral log of p of x dx but you know and the dy but now so in this latter integral um you see this uh the the log of px doesn't have any py's in it so that means that we can just integrate out um we can just integrate out the the y from this joint distribution so that disappears and so now this term so this term is just h of x and this term here is h of x, oops, h of y given x. So uh, hopefully that was reasonably clear. It's just a, just a couple lines applying uh, the product rule of, on the joint distribution and you get, uh, you get uh, the result below. The intuitive result that, um, that the, the amount of information you need to specify two variables jointly is the amount you need to specify one of them plus the conditional um, conditional entropy of specifying the other one. One, one more point, that, one more thing to point out is you can see this is actually symmetric, right? So it doesn't matter which way you go. And sometimes in some problems it can be easier, um, frequently actually, so, um, so it's frequently easier, for example, in, you know, inver in inverse models where you where you're going from, you know, let's say you have a generative model that has said, well, there are some, you know, hidden variables that are determining what you observe. Um, it's frequently easier to go from values of those hidden variables to um, to your observables than to go from the observables back to those hidden variables. So uh, in those settings, it's useful to know that these entropy um, these entropy quantities are frequently kind of they can be symmetric. So to, so to kind of be aware of the symmetries that are present. And here's an example of where that's the case. Good. Okay, so very short one on conditional entropy. Uh, let me highlight that um, again. And uh, yeah, so I think next time we'll start moving on towards um, relative entropy, um, callback, Leibler divergence, really important concepts. So I hope you'll join me um, in the next session. Thanks.